scum report. Yes. How about that? Week two. Or episode two of the Scum Report. As always, thank you for listening. Scum Malicious on a Saturday, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, hopefully, you already had your breakfast. I got a new little phrase that I came up with because I love these stupid little phrases for some reason. It's okay to get a little scummy after breakfast. And that's what we're going to do. Going to get right after it. And the first thing I want to talk about is Rick Pitino and the whole college basketball thing with Adidas and uh, all these coaches linked to this big giant FBI investigation. Uh, Of course, he got fired. And full disclosure here, not a huge college basketball fan. Uh, I might check it out, like at the at tournament time, or if uh, the Iowa Hawkeye basketball team is any good. But really, not a diehard. It's just really hard for me to believe because I I watched the interview yesterday on ESPN. It's really hard for me to believe him at this point. This is the same guy because what he said in the interview. Oh. Uh, I passed a lie detector test. I had no idea what was going on. Ted Bundy passed a lie detector test. And I'm not comparing Rick Pitino to Ted Bundy, obviously. But there's a reason why lie detector tests are not admissible in court. It's because they don't mean shit. A lot of the time. And just the way... He's like a politician. Uh... Jay Billis, the guy that did the interview, he, when he would ask him a question, he would kind of avoid it. He'd go on for two minutes, ramble on for two minutes about nothing to do with the the question that he asked, and then by that time you're like, what, what was the original question? What did he even ask him? Uh, And then, you know, he had the escort thing like a year ago. Supposedly the assistant coach was buying these escorts for recruits. And at that time, too, he had no idea that that was going on. Really? It's just nauseating at this point. And another thing I want to bring up. I want... To stop hearing. It's all about the kids. It, we we got to quit exploiting these kids. It's time to hold some of these guys accountable. All right, these athletes, uh, the ones that don't show up for class, they're only at school for one reason, and I think it's what like a one year rule now. They have to play at least go to one year of college before they can go to the NBA kind of fucking rule it. That's just stupid. If a guy is 18 and wants to go to the stri- straight to the NBA, then let him go. He's 18. And if he doesn't make it, he doesn't make it. But to make somebody go to college for a year is just ludicrous. It's a waste of time. You think they're going to any classes? No. What a stupid rule. But this thing with with the kids, they didn't know anything. Uh, and I think the, the last number I heard that this one kid was offered like $100,000. That kid knew what he was doing. And just like the kids with the, uh, with the escorts. I'm not hating them. Alright? Whether you agree or disagree with, with that, they're 18 year old kids and some guy says hey you want to come to our school because we got this for you and you walk in and you have three or four women sitting there and you get your choice of whichever woman you want 
What 18 year old kid's going to pass that up? But let's stop the whole, oh, the kids, they know what they're doing. And just like the, the guy from North Carolina that played for North Carolina, I can't even remember his name. I think his last name's McCants. He had people doing his work for him. And, and we know this, this stuff has been going on forever. It, it, it's not a shocker. But the whole, the whole thing's a mess. But everybody needs uh, to be accountable for what they did. And that's enough of that. Enough basketball talk. Kaepernick, I have to. I have to bring him up because I seen the thing where he's suing the NFL for collusion. He's saying that all 32 owners conspired so that he couldn't play in the NFL. He did it to himself. Whether you agree or disagree with the whole kneeling for the anthem or sitting, people forget he was the first one to do it. Well, I don't want to say people, some people. Nobody was talking about any of this, right? Now all these players uh, that are, hold their fist up in the air. And then I, read, I came across an article this morning, the lady that sings the national anthem for the Brooklyn Nets. She sang the anthem and then she took a knee. What the, the fuck does that mean? It's just be, it's become ridiculous now. It really has. Uh, people have forgotten what it, it was all about in the beginning. But what I was trying to say is that Kaepernick did this before anybody. Uh, just it happened. I think it was in the preseason, and some reporter he's like, "Hey, this guy's sitting for the anthem, right?" And you can talk about Black Lives Matter, all the social injustices, and all the other stuff that he supposedly stands for. Don't forget that he wore a Castro shirt. And on the front of that, it said, Great minds think alike. Fuck him. That is a ridiculous shirt to wear. And nobody's talking about that now. All we hear is, Hey, and I'm talking about the supporters of Kaepernick. He was doing this before everybody else. He wasn't, uh, he didn't wait for the cameras to be on him. He did it. He was the pioneer of this. And his woman, I said his woman, his girlfriend, significant other, whatever, he met her when he was on the 49ers. It was his teammate's girlfriend. And he went behind his teammate's back to get his girlfriend. I it's I just I cannot stand this guy. And I I will not forget the other shit that he did. I I just won't. I said it last week, it's just how I feel. They should stand for the anthem. It's all about the soldiers to me, but not getting into that debate. That's been beaten like a over the head with a or beaten in the head over and over again at nauseum, and I know I've done it. But don't forget the stupid shirt that he wore, and I think he wore some socks too. I can't remember what the socks said. Uh, I, and then don't forget too. When all this was happening and he was talking about social injustices, then when the election comes around, he didn't even fucking vote. Just, just shut up and go away. If You know what? If the 32 owners were in collusion, good. Sorry. Uh, and then, of course, the big news, and I talked about it last week, Harvey Weinstein, the whole... Uh, shit that he's been doing for a long time and all these women are coming out and of course there was the hashtag me too and I think uh, 
Alyssa Milano started it. And I'm seeing it again. It's these trolls and these scumballs on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, all the other uh, social media sites. And I know some people are asking, well, why, why do you engage with them? Because sometimes you have to call them out. You just do for their stupidity. And the whole thing, me too, there is a shitload of women uh, telling their stories. And of course, oh, here we go. Uh, right so two or three women they say something to happens to them and now it's 6,000 this is what happens right and there might be a few of them that are making shit up but let's not forget the original story uh, just because there's a fucking lunatic and they're everywhere. I said lunatic. I mean lunatics. Plural. They're everywhere. Alright. Don't forget the original message because of, of some idiots. Uh, yeah. um, it's good that the guy got fired. And I said last week too. I think it's awesome that the company he started, they fired his ass. You gotta love that. That takes balls. And but it can't stop there. So the hashtag me too needs to continue. We gotta keep this train rolling. Boycott some of these movies, like I said last week. I'm telling you, Ben Aslick, and I'll I'll get in get into him here in a little bit. Fuck him. But the hashtag me too does mean something. Ignore some of the bullshit with it because it's not an easy thing that these women are doing or have been through. Just have some respect for some of the victims. Quit thinking about the stupid shit. Don't lose the original message. Which brings me to another woman that's connected with this. Monica Lewinsky. She... She posted hashtag me too. And then she gets called out for it by uh, Juanita Roderick, uh, the woman that alleged Clinton had, uh, had raped her. Oh, well, it's about time. Where were you 20 years ago or whatever? Does it fucking matter? She's doing it now. And say whatever you want. Uh, Monica Lewinsky is another woman that gets destroyed. Uh, just remember, she was 19 years old, all right? And she's infatuated with the President of the United States. You know that he was saying stuff to her, and you cannot blame her for how she reacted or uh, posts that she's made on Twitter. Bill Clinton was an asshole. And it's just funny to me how, how some people, no matter what, will, will go out of their way to defend him. Never mind. Forget all the, wo all the women. And who knows how many women that he's done bad things to. You gotta love this. The train. Hopefully the train goes through pretty fast there. Yeah, we we hear you. Wow, we heard you. Yep. Yeah, they can hear you in Chicago. The horn works anyway. Who knows how many women that Bill Clinton has came across in his life or affected? Uh, it's just another one of those things where it, it, it's ridiculous how, how some people will root for a gigantic piece of shit. And, hey, if you like Bill Clinton and you voted for him and you thought he was a good president, more power to you. 
You have every right to to think that. It's free country. I just think he's a fucking scumbag. Which takes me to the next little item. Hollywood. I gotta take on Hollywood. I always will. I have to. They just, they have too much money in Hollywood. That's why we're having all these problems right now. David Cross, he's a comedian. He, he's he been in some movies I can't think of. Any of them off the top of my head, which is ridiculous, I should. The story comes out that about ten years ago, Charlene Yee met him and said he was offensive, said some racist shit. David Cross said he didn't remember, and then he tweeted and said, I'm shocked, uh, sorry, never meant to hurt her. And uh, his wife, who defended him the whole time, said he's not a racist, he's not offensive. Uh, she believes uh, Charlene Yee. Uh, so she's think, thinking in her mind that her husband said these offensive uh, remarks to this woman. Here's the problem. Comedians do this all the time. Uh, I'm not saying it's right or uh, he's thinking and he responded with a long tweet. I can't remember everything he said in there. But comedians use shit like this in their acts all the time, right? And we laugh about it. Uh, and every race does it makes fun of other racists in their acts and people laugh about it and where do we draw the line I'm not saying it's right that if people uh, make fun of another race but we see it all the time hell remember Eddie Murphy Raw made fun of Italians and, and I laughed I thought it was funny and I talked he even had the the accent. It's kind of kind of funny, but where where do we draw the line at? You know, are we going to do this every time a comedian uh, does something? Now it's just the lines are getting blurred here, blurred a little bit here, and I I, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, but to have your wife uh, take her side. It doesn't look good for him. So, I guess we'll see how the story goes. Or ends up. And the next thing. And yes, there was a little pause there. Because just thinking about it. Excuse me as I... Get me a little caffeine. Ah. There's my breakfast. Tea. God, how fucking lame is that? Hey... What are you doing today? Oh, getting ready to watch the, the game. How about you? Oh, I'm drinking hot tea. Oh, wow. All right. These celebrities that wear rock band t-shirts. That needs to stop because it's fucking embarrassing. I don't need to see Will Smith's son wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. Name one song from a... What What is his name, by the way? Jaden? Not hating on the... I hope that's his name. I am not hating on him as a person. But take the fucking shirt off. That's... I'm going to start that on Twitter. Hashtag take the shirt off. I am. I'm going to start that. It's ridiculous to wear a shirt of a band or an artist that you don't listen to. It all goes back to, to guys that wear... Uh, sports teams hats or shirts or jerseys because of the colors no you wear those because you're a fan of the fucking team it, the same thing applies to to this that same thing I'm not going to go to the store and say hey I where's the Katy Perry shirt oh Oh, you're a fan of Katy Perry? No! But 
I love that picture on her shirt. You know, it's got it's got blue in it. Blue's my favorite color. Oh yeah, I can see. Yeah, you wear the Katy Perry shirt with that, and then your blue shorts. Oh wow, you're very fashion savvy, Scovelicious. I know, honey. Oh, I, I'm gonna have to get your number. Well, of course. Hey, it's my show. I can play make believe if I want to. Anyway, yeah, just just take the shirt off. Kim Kardashian wearing a Metallica shirt. Just picture that in your mind. The guy, or the guy. Well, maybe she is a guy. Uh, the woman that's married to Kanye West is wearing a Metallica shirt. You know what? Maybe she should wear a Steel Panther shirt. Means he's in one of their songs. Death to All But Metal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she'd like Still Panther too much if she listened to that song. I, and I've seen other ones before that were just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I remember Paris Hilton one time. I can't remember the band. I, it, it was really crazy, like a Slayer shirt, I think. I'm like, bitch, just stop. Quit doing stupid shit. Of course, me saying that is stupid. That's that's all she does is stupid shit. Um, so Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I'm, we're staying on the Hollywood thing here for a minute. It hasn't been out yet. There was an early movie review uh, a couple days ago I watched. Schmoes No. If you haven't seen that on YouTube, you, you should watch it. Uh, they're pretty funny. They There's Chris Stuckman. I'm going to give these movie reviewers some love here boy they're gonna gain a lot of new fans if I'm talking about them they'll gain at least eight new fans just by me doing this uh, Chris Stuckman Jeremy Johns uh, Schmozno uh, there's another one too oh Midnight Screenings I kinda like him he's he's different a couple new ones that I discovered I'll mention them next week anyway Schmoes uh, they did the Thor Ragnarok, the new movie review. Everybody's saying it's going to be pretty good. Here's my thing. I'm burnt out on superhero movies. Uh, the Justice League trailer came out. And, yeah, Ben Aslick, fuck you. Maybe you probably got the Fonda Wonder Woman while you were shooting that, didn't you? And he uses that stupid, ridiculous voice. I'm Batman. We're going to go do something now. I'm Batman. Urgh. No, or I'm a superhero. No, you're a rich guy with a bunch of toys. And I'm not hating on Batman. I am just fucking burnt out on superheroes. They reboot these movies over and over, right? Are they Are they going to do another Superman movie? We had the... What was it? Superman Returns or whatever. And then we had the other one. I don't know. The guy from Iowa. I'm getting them all confused. Because I really am. Every other year. We get like four or five superhero movies now. Just There's another new one that's coming out. Uh, uh, the Black Panther. Actually that one looked kind of cool. Maybe I, I will check that one out. Because we haven't had. 23 version, different versions of it. Uh, just my opinion. I fuck superheroes. Just give me a break. I guess that's what I'm asking for. Cause I I like Spider Man. I do. I haven't seen the new one that came out in July, but look kind of good. I thought I'd check it out. But yeah, give us a year. We just need a break. And they had that crazy one, uh, Doctor Strange. I'm like, they, they literally are going to make a movie out of every person that Stan Lee ever came up with and put in a comic book. Holy shit, man. Now, last week, I did my uh, most overrated Halloween movies. This is all from my buddy, uh, Jenna Fucalero Smith Davis Jones. Huge Hollywood, Halloween fan. Had about 23 posts in last week about Halloween. Which I love. I'm not ripping her for it. 
but this segment is definitely for her. So, overrated, we're doing underrated. And, I'm sure people disagree with me on this list, but like I always say, do a podcast and come up with your own list. And then, on your show, you can say, how about that, Scumlicious? You ain't got shit to say about that. No, I don't. You're right. The Thing, and I actually watched this again yesterday. It was on Encore with Kurt Russell, 1981, John Carpenter. That was an awesome movie, and it still is. That outer, that uh, shit, I don't even know what to say. The alien. There's an alien ship that lands in uh, Antarctica, and it takes the form of about everything that's walking the planet. It gets into the dogs and then and then the people. I love the scene where the doctor has got that little instrument and he's rubbing against the guy's stomach and all of a sudden, bam! Teeth appear. He fucking eats both of his arms off. And it still looks good today. It holds up. And I know they remade that movie... I haven't watched it. Don't fucking watch the remake. The original is fine. It's John Carpenter. Just like I said about Rob Zombie. Go make your own stupid fucking movies with your wife. Leave John Carpenter alone. Same same thing applies to the thing. Boy, that's the second time I've used that. Same thing applies. Is that a new hashtag for Twitter too? I'm telling you though, hashtag take the shirt off. That's going to happen. Uh, next movie, The Original Evil Dead. I know what you're saying. Underrated. It really is. And, I don't know, what year was it? 81. I believe it was. Either one, 81 or 82. It was rated R. But I remember the first time I watched that. And I'm not talking about Evil Dead 2, uh, Dead by Dawn. That's basically a remake of the original Evil Dead. They just had more money to work with. Sam Raimi did. I remember watching the original one going, holy fuck, this is crazy. She gets raped by the tree. Just picture that in your mind. If you haven't seen the movie, literally, she gets raped by a tree. And I'm not making fun of that. I'm not making a joke about it. I'm just saying it's pretty, especially, I was like 14 at the time. Trust me, my mom had no idea I was watching it because she had shut it off. I remember thinking, holy shit, did I just watch that? And it is still fucked up today, just like the thing. The gore, and I mentioned this last week about the one chick that got stabbed in the foot with a pencil and it just fucking squirts everywhere. Oh my god, that's just crazy. And the amount of gore in that and we're not talking CGI yeah. the movies didn't use the CGI effects like they do you know like they do today people actually physically did special effects and you gotta respect that and I can't remember the number that I seen that they, the budget that Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell had to work with to make this movie but holy fuck what a job gotta love it and now it's NC-17 and it should have been well they didn't have it back then but I'm glad they did it now because it is an NC-17 movie but I'm telling you it's still scary it still holds up 28 days later remember that and I say underrated because I don't hear people talk about it a lot as far as a horror movie and the one thing that they did that was different with zombies think about some of the older zombie movies the original Night of the Living Dead uh, the zombies are usually really slow and you're thinking when you're watching those movies you could probably run away from the zombie it takes them five minutes to walk two feet But in 28 Days Later, it's the exact opposite. They're busting through walls and going 100,000 miles an hour. And 
the camera work and that's really fucked up because it's fast and it's shaky I was kind of getting a headache watching it sometimes but yeah those aren't the old zombies anymore these are the ones that will fuck you up really was surprised by that movie wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was quarantine is the other one is another one I don't know if uh, a ton of people like it like I do of course it's the whole found footage or camcorder shot movie that I just wish they quit doing those now every other horror movie is filmed like that now it's, they beat that shit to fucking death like everything else but it's they get in that a giant apartment building and of course they quarantine it off and everybody gets infected and they turn into a crazy ass I want to say zombie whatever you want to call it just fucked up and start like every horror movie every other horror movie you know somebody gets infected with something and then they eat everything in sight that's what happens in here only in a one building and the thing at the end they get to the top floor and it's just the female reporter and her cameraman they're the only two people left alive in the building and they get to the top floor and they see all these news articles like a uh, freaking science experiment gone wrong and the, that fucking creature at the end holy shit and the way they do that it's super dark and the only thing you see is the light from the camera and the end of the, the ending of that scared the shit out of me I thought it was pretty effective uh, and of course it ends with that thing dragging her and then of course the camera drops and that's how the movie ends but still pretty fucking scary movie Relic and this one, it is kind of goofy. came out in 1997. Uh, Penelope Ann Miller's in that. Do you guys remember her at all? I do. She was in The Freshman with uh, uh, the guy that played Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Matthew Broderick. But I don't watch that movie anymore. Why? Because Marlon Brando's in it. I know you remember that from last week, so I'm not even going to go down that path. But I always thought Penelope Ann Miller was kind of cute. That's why I brought it up. Anyway, she's in this, in this, it, a museum. She works at a museum and they get this crazy ass it, it, thing. I'm trying to, in my mind, figure out what it was. It's like a combination of a little bug that eats this leaf and it turns into a giant half beetle half something lizard thing and it eats people's it or a certain part of their brain and I'm not going to try to pronounce the word that they use and they say it a lot in this movie and I remember watching it thinking wow I can't remember a horror movie using gigantic words like that using it a lot it'd still be a good movie but it's really funny the cop that's in there can't remember his name he's been in a ton of movies I think he was on Celebrity Rehab he's probably on coke in this movie but it was really funny and that this giant fucking bug just head after head just gets decapitated blood squirts everywhere really gory for 1997 uh, it's not the greatest movie ever made but it's pretty good i I know I've seen a lot worse. And then I have two here that, like, honorable mentions. Primal. It's an Australian movie. Holy fucking shit. Is this a crazy movie? I'll make a long story short. These bugs, they... They get into these this girl skin, and then she turns into this fucking half-monster thing that eats everything in sight they wake up the next day and, and I can't remember her name 
for the purposes of, of this, I'll just say her name's Lisa. I don't know. I don't remember her name. Lisa, Lisa. And she turns around, of course, and she's got giant teeth and half the rabbits in her mouth. Uh, but the movie ends. It's this giant cave. And basically, this cave has this giant worm, and it tries to impregnate the woman at the end. Yeah, there's your spoiler alert, sorry. Yeah, that's a... Sorry, not spoiler free, but... It's a crazy movie. Uh, you have to watch it. Yeah. But there's also a part in there where the first girl, the one that I called Lisa, her boyfriend gets all upset that she gets infected. Well, there's a... I don't know if it's his friend. He's just an asshole that's with the other people there well he gets infected and this guy and the boyfriend they hate each other well he wakes up one night of course he can't do nothing they're both infected and he he looks up and it's that guy uh having sex with his infected woman <laughs> he's sitting there crying it's so terrible it's like ain't nothing you can do he's pounding your woman and she's infected and he's infected so can't blame him though uh, if you're infected what are you going to do she's right there no other woman's going to touch you so you can't hate on him for that alright the last one I want to mention I don't know if it's really considered underrated but I just don't think I hear people talk about it a lot The Descent that is a fucked up movie the girls going to the cave that's another thing about horror movies and I understand it people in horror movies make stupid decisions they have to or the movie wouldn't play out but they go into a cave that they've never been to before and the one woman says w where do we go from here oh I don't know I left the map at home I thought we could just work our way out of it or really you have to be that stupid don't you and then of course them creatures down there they, they can't see they're blind as a bat but they're super white and they got giant sharp teeth and then they, they come across the bones there's this gigantic pile of bones of animals that they went to the top and grabbed and ate yeah that I was not expecting that the first time I watched it but, oh here we go stupid level B horror movie pretty good and the acting the women in it pretty good actresses so I was definitely surprised by that and now finally my specialty music you know the big release yesterday wow what a day for me seven times I listened to gore the blood of gods not kidding uh, I am so surprised and I saw a few comments on YouTube from some hardcore war fans. They're like, just not feeling it. <laughs> Gotta give it a chance. Blothar, aka Michael Bishop, the original Beefcake the Mighty bass player, he is really good on this album. He's actually a good singer. And he doesn't try to be odorous, and that's the way he should have done it. There's some of the lyrics that remind me of odorous, but he does these songs in his own style. The heaviness is still there. It's gore. We haven't had a new album from him in four years. Uh, and they lose the most important guy to the band, Odorous Rungus, a.k.a. Dad, rest in peace. And for them to be able to record an album that would even be solid would be a victory. But I'm telling you, it's better than solid. And I'm not just saying that and sounding like a fucking fanboy. You have to give it a chance. I'm telling you, Gore fans, it's really good. And uh, Phantom Limb, uh, Song 11, the track before If You Want Blood, the ACDC cover... Listen to his, listen to Blothar's vocals on that song. That dude brought it. 
and with passion. And I know the lyrics are all fucking goofy and all that shit, but listen to him sing on that song. I, hey, he kicked ass. Great album, Blood of God, five. That's right. It was a scumalicious special. Another band released an album, Slipknot. I, I will review it, and I'm going to tell you something. For those who don't know, I hated on Slipknot for a long time. I will never be a gigantic fan of the band, but I do respect them. A lot of people would think, oh, you should like them. They're from Iowa. You got a band from Iowa that made it. Yeah, but I just could never get into them. I just couldn't. Uh, um, but I do respect them as musicians and for surviving a lot of shit and sticking with it. Uh, it a lot of it had to do with... Uh, Corey Taylor, the singer, talking shit uh, about odors, and it pissed me off. And he, he said something to the effect, well, we didn't know about Slipknot. We didn't want to stick around and end up like Gore or end up like something like Gore. I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but it was a big slap in the face to Gore. And... I say, you know what, Corey Taylor, fuck you, lick my sack. Right, shots fired right there. But, over the last two or three years, I was like, I understood what he said. He, I did. Uh, still didn't like him talking shit about my band. And yes, they're my band. Uh, but... Like I keep saying here, I do respect them. They've hung in there. They could have just hung it up. And I know it's not easy to be in a band like that where you got to put those costumes on and off every night, sweat your ass off. Uh, it's not always glamorous like people think. Uh, but I will be reviewing it, and I will give an honest review. I'm not going to hate on it just because I don't listen to it. That's something I've been working on, and I'm getting better at it. Trivium also released an album yesterday, and I noticed that Banger, Overkill Reviews, reviewed it yesterday. Great channel, by the way, on YouTube. You should check it out. I don't understand that band. I don't. Uh, I know they were really young when they started out. I think the oldest guy's like 30, and they've put out like eight albums so they stayed pretty busy in a short amount of time I I just not a fan of the band uh, when they first like the first time I ever heard them it was like they were trying to be Metallica but they just didn't know how to go about doing it and, and they're still like they try to be heavy but then their choruses sound like they should be in some kind of fucking pop song I I don't understand it I was pissed because I love that channel I talk about it all the time and they chose to review Trivium over Gore come on Sam that just fucking sucked I, I'm pretty sure knowing Sam that he'll review Gore next week because he's a Gore fan and he knows what he's talking about when it comes to music. Almost as much as me. Just saying. Alright, there you go. Episode 2 of The Scum Report. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Be back again next Saturday. 10 o'clock every Saturday. I'm your shot of vodka before the football game. Alright. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take it easy. And if it's easy... Take it twice. I'm out.